welcoming refrigeration and air conditioning lecture today we will see unit number 6 air distribution system in last lecture we have already completed unit number 5 that is different air conditioning system and components of refrigeration and air conditioning so in this lecture we will start air distribution system so in air distribution system we know that air handling unit that topic we already covered in air handling unit we studied how the air handling system works the air handling unit send the air to the conditioned space so when we are sending this air which is to be conditioned then we require air distribution system so the air which is processed in air handling unit is supplied to the room which are to be air conditioned. This requires an air distribution system. So if you consider the air distribution system between the HU and the room which is to be conditioned, then there are four components of this system. First, supply air duct, second, supply air outlet, third, return air outlet, and fourth, return air duct. The function of supply air duct, it carries air from air handling unit HU to the room. The supply air outlet function, it introduces air into the room. Return air outlet, it takes out room air for carrying to air handling unit and return air duct it carries room air to HU for circulation so it is very important to study this air distribution system so in this air distribution system if you see the design of duct is very important so design of duct is nothing but find out the diameter of duct so before starting this design of duct it is necessary so what type of duct material is used for the duct system so duct and duct material so duct is a pipe or tube which carries liquid or gas the most commonly material used for ducting is di sheet the synthetic material like fiberglass, glass fiber reinforced plastic can also be optioned for duct material in place of aluminium and steel, stainless steel. So if we consider the basic duct materials are galvanized steel, aluminium, fiberglass and glass fiber reinforced plastic. So if you see there are different types of ducts we are generally used for the air distribution system so the classification of duct if you see then ducts are classified based on the shape pressure and velocity based on shape rectangular duct round duct and oval ducts are used for different types of shapes based on pressure there are again three types of duct that is high pressure duct, medium pressure duct and low pressure duct. And based on velocity there are two types of ducts that is high velocity, low velocity. When the velocity of air is higher than 10 meter per second then it comes in the category of high velocity duct. When the velocity is less than 10 meter per second then it goes in the category of low velocity duct. 
So this is the basic classification of the which are used in a distribution system. So before going to the design of any air distribution system, it is very necessary to study the basic fundamental of duct system that is flow of air through a duct. So for real fluid with finite viscosity, the modified Bernoulli's equation gives the head loss between any two points in the duct. So if we see any two points in the duct, then flow of air through the duct we are going to study or we can find out the head loss with the help of modified Bernoulli's equation. So this is your modified Bernoulli's equation that is head 1 plus P1 by rho t plus V1 square divided by 2 t is equal to head 2 plus P2 by rho t plus V2 square by 2 t plus HL where this HL is energy loss or head loss. So here we have to find out this head loss. So when we are considering two points on the duct. So here P1 by rho t is your static head, V1 square by 2 t is your velocity head and head 1 is the head due to elevation. So similarly this is your static head, velocity head and head due to elevation at point 2 and you can calculate this head loss. To overcome the head loss a fan is required then when we are going to select the fan then it is very necessary to find out the power required to run this fan. So the power required to run the fan you can find out by using P is equal to Q air into fan total power divided by efficiency of fan. So this power required to fan you can find out once you know this Q air that is the volumetric flow rate of air, fan total power and efficiency of the fan. So by using this equation you can easily find out the fan power which is required for the selection of fan. Then pressure losses in duct, it is very necessary to find out the fan total power and for finding the fan total power, it is necessary to study the different pressure losses in the duct. So if you see the pressure losses in duct is only due to two reasons, first one is that is friction losses and second one is the dynamic losses. So friction losses, losses of pressure due to friction between moving particles of fluid and interior surface of duct. It occurs throughout the duct length. So when we go for finding the pressure losses due to friction then we need to use this Darcy wave back equation. So this Darcy equation we are going to use for finding the pressure loss due to the friction Therefore, delta P is equal to, you can see here delta P is equal to F T L by D into rho V square by T, where delta P is the pressure loss in Newton per meter square, F D is Darcy friction factor, L is pipe length in meter, D is your hydraulic diameter in meter, V is fluid flow average velocity in meter per second, and rho is the density, fluid density in kT per meter cube. So with the help of these equations, you can easily find out the pressure loss due to friction. So if you go for finding the friction loss in a circular duct, then friction charts are used for estimation of this frictional pressure drop of standard air for circular ducts made of dry sheets. The condition of your standard air is nothing but the air temperature should be 20 degrees Celsius and the pressure is 1 bar. So the condition of standard air is 20 degrees Celsius temperature and 1 bar pressure. So these frictional charts we are generally used only for the circular duct. So for other shapes an equivalent diameter has to be used to estimate the frictional pressure drops. So rectangular ducts, square ducts, these are the different types of ducts preferably we are going to use in the air distribution system. So rectangular ducts are preferred as they occupy less space 
and are easy to fabricate. So frictional charts we can use for the shapes other than circular ducts but we need to find out the equivalent diameter for finding this frictional pressure drop. So second types of losses are dynamic losses in duct system. So dynamic loss of pressure occurs due to change in cross sections of duct and also due to the change in direction of the duct. So if we consider there are different types of dynamic losses, pressure loss due to enlargement, pressure loss due to contraction, pressure loss at entry or exit from duct, pressure loss in bend, tease and branch offs. So if you see pressure loss due to enlargement and contractions then you can see here this is the basic diameter of the duct and when this sudden enlargement takes place then what happens you can see the ED current is developed and because of this the losses created are pressure loss due to the enlargement. Similarly here you can see that when this is your basic diameter of duct when it contracts then there is formation of vena contracta that is your formation of the vena contracta and because of this there is there are different losses pressure losses takes place in pressure loss due to contraction so because of different types of vein different types of elbows so what type of losses are there we found that losses pressure losses are called as your dynamic losses so here we studied this is the basic fundamental that is flow of air through duct different types of ducts and the pressure losses in ducts in next lectures we will see different design methods of ducts so how we can go for the design of ducts thank you if you have any query regarding this you can mail me on vinod cs p1576 at the rate of gmail.com thank you